agree that they should have treated me a lot better given that I was in the house last night and got a wonderful reception from some fans of our show, by the way, which was great. But then, you know, the actual team really didn't come through for me. I would just like to note that you'll go to the Bronx to watch the dudes lose, but you don't ever come uptown to, like, my house. Mm. I haven't gotten an invite in a little while, Bo. Are the birds still flying in to the glass panes on your roof deck and killing themselves? There's a carcass on the terrace as we speak. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It I happens. think furniture is how you solve that. Yeah, but... pay for some. Yeah. Names of the day. We'll start with your man, Aaron Boone. Mm. Pablo, you watched Yankees season end last night for the second straight game. Their manager is being blamed for not going to his great bullpen early. Letting CC Sabathia pitch the entire third inning as the Red Sox scored three runs. Pablo, do you blame Boone for your heartbreak last night? Bo, you know that when I go to sporting events, I become a different person. I turn into Stephen Asian Smith. I'm, I, I have louder opinions. I want people fired, and I want Aaron Boone fired. That's how I felt last night in the Bronx, and the reason is because they gave him Brian Cashman and the Yankees, they gave him the best bullpen in baseball history by war, by strikeout rate, and instead, for the second game in a row, in an elimination game, he lets CC Sabathia, who I otherwise love, struggle through that third inning, and you had other moves to make. Why did you not make them Aaron Boone? Why? Wow, that's, that's, that's a charged up level of energy. I'll try to make myself care about baseball too. Look, this is the part that I get in from a guy like Boone or anybody else. I myself am not to this point of abandoning your starting pitcher that you think is good, right? Because I get where everybody comes from, this notion of high leverage innings. I get the idea. No, you don't just save your best relievers for the end. The other innings also count. I can also see how somebody would think, we got a horse out here. We're going to let him get out of this. Because at some point, yeah, you can bring those guys out early, but then you don't have them late. That is to be considered. But do you really think this is why they lost? Lost the game. I lost think, the series. I think this was a 4-3 game and that the difference was that CC Sabathia, who again is probably a Hall of Famer, is my favorite player on this team. That dude had one swing and miss on his first 37 pitches and then ended up facing a line of righties, right? Bring in the other guy. Bring in the righty, Bo. Bring in the righty to face those guys. That's the reason why they lost. Yes. And Obviously, right, the Yankees also have the most home runs in regular season history. And did they hit any of them in the two games in the Bronx? No. Also true, the Red Sox pitching was fantastic. But when you had a chance to make a move and control your destiny, Aaron Bleepin' Boone proved that he does not know how to manage in 2018. Does he not know how to manage or is he new? Right, because this is the first year he's done this, it's right? the first year. Right. He was working here before. Right. Well, hey, we'll see how this goes. Also, like, managing thing is weird. We watched, uh, what's his name? Ned Yost, <laughs> who we all thought stunk until they won a World Series, specifically because he did the things that we think stink, right? Yes. Like, that's where we are. The other argument is Aaron Boone kind of owes them a favor, doesn't he? The yeah, and, and you know what? I just wish that Aaron Bleepin' Boone was getting curses yelled at him in the other direction this time. But we have another name. Dak Prescott, the Cowboys quarterback, has struggled this year, as we know, throwing five touchdowns and four interceptions over five games with a 61% completion percentage, which is 28th best in the league. And yesterday, Cowboys legend Troy Aikman had some strong criticism for Dak. He needs to be more accurate with the football. The first thing I look for in a QB is accuracy because the rest of it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how tough you are. It doesn't matter how smart you are or what a great leader you are. None of that stuff matters if you can't put the ball where you have to put it. Bo, is the criticism from Aikman there a little unfair to Dak? No, I think that he's right on this. Now, it should be noted that Aikman is coming at this from the perspective of someone whose calling card was accuracy. So, like, the thing I did the best is, of course, going to be the most important yes. thing that you can do. That being said, when they changed this office, and in part when they got, not so much changed the office, when they got Des Bryant out of there, one of the explanations was Dak wants to be more of a timing sort of guy, more like Troy Aikman, mm -hmm. right? Hit these guys in rhythm. If that's the quarterback that he wants to be, then he has to be accurate, right? If you didn't want a guy like Dez who can kind of muscle his way into catches and make it happen, then you're going to have to be the one to put the ball exactly where it needs to be. And in spite of how poor their receivers are, this has been a legitimate criticism of him all year long. It has been, and the crazy part about this, reading up on it, Field Yates talked to a personnel person in the NFL who pointed out that you still have to pay Dak. When Dak is up in 2020, I believe, 
People are believing, smart people in football are believing that you pay him more than Bortles, who makes 18 million a year. You probably pay him more than Jameis, although Jameis is up for a contract right now. And you probably pay him more than Derek Carr, who's making 25 million a year. So that means that Dak Prescott is probably going to be making, for all of the imprecision we're watching right now, about 20 million plus for the Cowboys in a couple of years, which seems to me like an understandable decision, but a way to lock yourself onto that treadmill of mediocrity. Well, it's tricky because you can win without having a great quarterback. Go look at the last 20 years worth of quarterbacks. Greatness, right? Even the guys that ultimately became great. You don't necessarily have to be great at the time. The question you ask is, can you do it while paying $20 million? Right. right? We'll see what happens to the cap, what a percentage it is, all of that. Here's my question. Why do they have to pay him? Mm. There's nothing that says that they have to pay him. They did not give up a first round pick for him. They have already gotten an amazing return from what they got out of Dak in the draft. Why can't they draft a quarterback in 2019 if they're not sold on this dude? Yes, hit reset, cost control your quarterback, build around him, which he didn't do this time. Yeah. All right, next up to Sean Watson. Texas quarterback is dealing with a chest injury after being hit a league high 55 times this season. He says he's, quote, built to take those hits, but his star receiver DeAndre Hopkins says in the huddle, he tells Watson to, quote, get down. Pablo, does Deshaun need to change how he plays? Deshaun needs to let DeAndre help him help this team because, yes, when you are on a team with a subpar offense and a good quarterback in a division that is still winnable for this Houston Texans team, your instinct as the quarterback is to put yourself on the line as much as possible. But if you do that, you may not be around when the team is much better and they're actually contending. So I am worried about this guy, absolutely. Well, I think that it's too easy to go to the get down when you run the ball part of it. Because, yeah, that's certainly there. The other thing is the only person that's waiting longer before he throws passes this year in the league is Josh Allen. Yeah. So, like, a controllable yeah. part of this for him is he's got to get the ball out of there. But he says, I'm built to take these hits. No, you're not. Nobody's built no to take these is. hits. Like the human body is not engineered for you to be able to do this. He is going to have to better protect himself. If for no other reason, then, if I'm not mistaken, the dude coming off the bench is the weed man. I, I, the weed man's still in the league, and I think the weed man plays for them. And you can't call in the weed man on short notice. It'll take him forever to get there. You can, not on a Sunday. A Sunday is a very Never. busy day for the weed man. But for Deshaun Watson, the dude also could use some pain relief because he has those busted up ribs already. And so what it feels like, Bo, is a guy who knows that he is a leader of a team, but he's saying stuff that you don't actually well, want him to implement. Right, right. No, he's saying the thing that you have to say. You can't get out there and say, so how about those hits, man? They're really doing a number on me. You right. cannot say no. that. Right? What he is saying is what he has to say. But something struck me. That Texas offensive line is not very good. I think it's no. universally agreed upon. Man, when they did the thing the other night where the other guys get up and say their names and what college they went yeah. to, man, there wasn't no lot of big brand names on that offensive line. Mm. They went bargain hunting. Mm. Last name is James Harden. Last night against the Shanghai Sharks, Harden debuted a new move that had the internet in arms screaming that is, in fact, a travel. Bo, is this new move a travel as we watch this? I'm going to be honest with you. The first time I saw this, I was like, I actually don't believe this is a travel. Hmm. I, I understand why people would, but look at this, right? Gather, steps, shot. That's legit. That goes. And the last thing you ever want to be in this world, people, ain't nothing whacker than a travel truther, <laughs> right? Like you are, the travel truther, by the way, is very often, I hate the NBA guy. Like yes. you don't ever want to be in the same place as him. But I understand why people thought it was a travel. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't, and the NBA and the NBA referees ruled that it was not to your credit. And the thing about not liking basketball is where I truly agree with you on this, because James Harden, right, the previous critique of him was that he is the NBA's tax attorney, he's a guy who will look for the rules, try to exploit those rules, get underneath, draw fouls, all that stuff. This is James Harden knowing the rules well enough to actually entertain us. This is a beautiful move. Steph Curry does a worse version of this. It's basically a jump stop to your side.
James Harden is just a master of this move, and yeah, it should confuse you. That's the sleight of hand yeah, element. Yeah, too. but hold on though. You said that this is him knowing the rules. I don't feel like he did this on some, you know, I've been studying the rule book lately, and I have determined this move that I can make. No, man, this is the kind of thing you do in a preseason game. They play in the Shanghai they Sharks. Are. Right? Like, like, when he looked at that dude, <laughs> I want to know the other moves that he had in mind that he didn't care if they were travels. This is what we do when we play against the Shanghai Sharks. And you know who the best player on the Shanghai Sharks is right now? Yes, I do. Chinese superstar Jimmer Fredette. Yes, China's favorite son. Jimmer Fredette dropping 41 points on approximately 1 billion shots, I believe, yeah. is the statistic. I, I wonder how, the, how much those dudes hate them. How do you say <laughs> pass the ball in Chinese? Uncle Tony is here. High Noon is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. When I was shopping for car insurance, the choice was easy. I switched to GEICO and saved hundreds. <laughs> Excuse me. Winner. That's a win, but it's not the only reason I switched.